Wow. You started when you were three, right? I started when I was two. Oh, my God. Gee. And now he's three. Okay. <laughs> well, we love having you on the show, man, I tell you. Sure. Okay, who's up next? Who's the next uh, victim or guest? Do we have enough room back there? Uh, am I caught? I tell you, this is a, this is a very high-budget film that you're watching. Let me see if I can get back here. I'll get this, the smallest man of the group here. <laughs> Your name, sir, where are you hail from? Michael Vigilante from downtown Los Angeles. Hey, all right. <laughs> this is a very eclectic group. You can tell where they're from. And this guy's a vigilante. I like that name, man. You must scare people. This is not the guy you want to run into in a dark alley at night, okay? Or, or a back street, you know, dirt. And how long have you been playing? Uh, a little over 30 years. 30 years? My goodness. Has this been your only band? No. <laughs> you, you could mention, unless the, the band gets, how many bands have you been with? Oh, many, many. Too many to count. Yeah, because you look, you look a little familiar. I don't know. I think we met somewhere, so probably at a casino. Anyway, <laughs> hey, 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 watch yourself. You're, you're close to the edge here as it is. <laughs> All right, let's say a round of applause for this young man. Very daring, very daring. Okay, and this young man, you. one keyboard wasn't enough. <laughs> your name, sir? My name is Kirby Furlong. I'm from Northridge, California. Northridge, just here for Northridge, you know? You saved the last two of us are the Valley Boys. You saved us to last. Oh, yeah. He's a Valley Boy. A Valley Boy, too? Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Huh? I would never have known. <laughs> Who would have thunk? I thought you were talking about the Vigilante. No. Anywho. <laughs> yeah, he looks Valley. And how long have you been playing? Oh, many, many years. Okay, well, you guys, you guys got, you know, are you guys on like a work release program? You guys are so vague, you know, many years, long time, a while. Gee whiz. Has this been your only band? Oh, no. No, many, many different bands. In fact, I used to work with him back in the 80s in a different band. And what was the name of that band? I can't remember. <laughs> I've heard that group. I can't remember. You know, well, we love having you on the show here. Okay. You... Okay, I'm going up, uphill here. It's an uphill battle. Your name, sir, where are you hail from? It's uh, Mike Bees. I'm from uh, North Hollywood, California. Okay, let's hear from North Hollywood. There you go. And how long have you been playing? And boy, do you have a set going for you. Yeah, I just started today, you know. I mean, this is his first, first gig, you know. I mean, I'm glad these guys is, uh, set me in the van, you know. Did, did I do okay, man? It's okay? Okay, all right. Am I right? Did I get the gig? No. <laughs> no. See, this is what I love about it. He's disavowing knowledge of the band completely. <laughs> They're being vague, and he goes, I don't know. I just, I just walked in, you know. And uh, so have you played with any other bands? I'm always curious because you guys are a real nice group. I told you this was my first band. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> that was, yeah, I played, played around quite a bit, you know, all over different, different bands. I like that. I'm a, I'm a all player. over. I'm a player. <laughs> He's a player. <laughs> Well, thanks for coming on the show, my friend. Oh, my God. Well, individually, collectively, and all together, that is Backstreet. So what we're going to do is we're going to let them break into another song, and then we'll come back, and we will have our next guest, Lorna, here on El Monte tonight. Take it away, Backstreet.
Thank you. And hopefully they'll get our camera on us. Oh, there we are. We came on in. Give them another round of applause. They worked too hard. And you got to be real. And speaking of being real, we have Lorna Silva. Can we have a round of applause for Lorna, please? She's a life coach, leadership, and communication consultant. There is a theme to the show. We're talking about communicating here. Oh, boy. How are you doing, Lorna? I'm doing great. It's good to see you. She was on uh, our uh, my little daughter, uh, Maggie's, Maggie's World, the other day, right? Yes, I was. Yeah, you did a great job. Did it in English and Spanish. Yes, we did. It's a bilingual show, so it was a lot of fun. Yeah, you guys had a good time. You know, she's a fun lady, isn't she? Oh, yeah, she is. I know. I love her. That's why I adopted her. She's such a sweetheart. So tell us a little bit about what's happening in life coaching. Well, um, it's interesting. Like you said, the theme of the, of the night seems to be relationships. Mm -hmm. And when I was here to, see, uh, to speak with Maggie, it was about um, a book called uh, The Five Love Languages. See, I lecture regularly at Maggie's uh, Center, the OMP Center. Right. And when I did the five love languages, that was by far the most popular lecture I've ever had where they've asked me to come back. And also in my life coaching practice, like a lot of the issues that tend to come up is, of course, relationships. So when I present the concept of the five love languages, people go like, what? I didn't know that existed. That makes so much sense. So that's why, you know, it's, it's something so simple that I've made it as part of my work to talk about it because it's such a simple concept. See that? And you know I was listening to you, right? Yes. Oh, uh, yes, I otherwise, was. Otherwise, uh, McCall's going to get me. He told me <laughs> if I don't listen. No, but that's what I say. It's communication. And in part of, uh, I, I, mean, I know when you were on the show with Maggie, you guys were talking about uh, nonverbal communication as well. Yes, indeed. And so, this, you see, what this whole concept of five law of languages is that we as human beings who experience and express love differently and that's it, the, the way the author describes it is as a language mm -hmm. so words is a very important uh, part of uh, communication in language but there is also other forms of communicating like physical touch like gifts it's another way of expressing and receiving love quality time and it's not just talking but actually doing activities together and um Things like, um, and also acts of service, when you're doing things for other, when, you know, especially moms, like, love to do things for you, especially Latino moms, you should know. Yes. Uh, yes, that Latino moms love to cook and clean for you, and it's, that's a way they express love. So that's another way, you know, that tends to be like, a, if, you can, if you can call it that way, a breakdown in communication where it's, but I tell her that I love her all the time, but she's like, but perhaps you're not showing her or him love in a way that she understands it and expresses it good point i'll yes. give you a good example backstreet band they love us because they gave us so much good music wouldn't you say oh absolutely they're gonna give us some more see that's love yes they show you. and they love their their uh craft and their artistry just like my buddy ray ponson who's gonna be coming up in a little bit we have a lot of talented people that show love like i say show me some love they show it yes so this this is really good now how do people get a hold of you though i mean like say if they want you to come on and do a seminar or, or you know um i've uh, given you my email it's grow transform it's all one word mm -hmm. grow transform at gmail.com and also you can find me at the own peace center uh right here in almani right here in almani just up the street from here so i lecture there every thursday night 7 30 to 9 30. Oh, beautiful. See, so we, we need to know this. So what are, what are some of the other uh, uh, languages? Uh, so let's see. So love language. One is words of affirmation. It's uh, saying, you know, I love you, but not just saying I love you, but acknowledgement. You know what you appreciate of the other person, and especially for men, it tends to work. Uh, I believe in you. I, you can do this. I believe in you. So words of affirmation is one. Physical touch is another one, and that's not just sex. It's, you know, sometimes people, you need to be held. You need a hug to feel love. That's one. And also, think of love languages with your children. Like some, and as the children grow, you'll discover what's their love language. So if a child, their love language is physical touch and hugging, getting a kiss from their parents is a big deal. For them, being physically hit, it's devastating. Mm -hmm. So physical touch is another love language. Um... Then acts of service, when you do good deeds for others, and it's usually without expecting anything in return, that's another love language. And uh, gifts, 
also a lot of people experience love through gifts because it's not the material thing that you're getting it's not the value but it's the fact that oh my god he was thinking of me when he was traveling god knows where he thought of me and he bought me this so it's that thought behind mm -hmm. especially when you think of kids you know that there are kids that it means the world when you receive what you give them Oh, what, do you, what do you receive what they give you and they see you carrying it around like I see it in the daughter of a friend of mine that girl like the fact that her daddy always has the little rock that she gave him rocks her world that's very clear for that little girl gifts is a love language and quality time in quality time it's not just necessarily it's a talking and saying I love you but it's quality conversation what's going on in your life what's going on in mine in doing activities together and so and i love your i know your previous guest talked about that you know mm -hmm. that scheduling that time and for some people that quality time is the make or break of the relationship oh yeah well you need that you need that yes. you know i was, I was thinking about when you were saying about gifts um i know my mom used to do this no matter what we brought home i have four brothers no matter what we, what we brought home no matter how crappy it was She'd put it up on the wall. I mean, it, it looked like mm -hmm. nothing. You couldn't even tell. And she'd still put it up there. She was proud, like, no matter what, you know. Uh, you know, my brother would jump off the diving board, just b belly flop. And she would make it sound like he was an Olympic champion doing a spin in the air and all that mm -hmm. stuff. So it was those little things, they mean a lot. Yes. And that's what really counts, you know. So parents out there, think about that. Whenever your kids, don't ever try to be too busy because they're you're their whole world. When they look up and they look at you, that becomes the whole world and what they're feeling at that moment. And you might think, well, it's just a little thing. You know, they'll get over it. Hey, it takes a lot. It takes a lot, especially especially like if it's an uh, a only child. I know an only child. My son, and it was just always, uh, you know, he's used to all the attention. So yes. if he doesn't get it, you know, he would he would trip out a little bit. He wouldn't, he wouldn't get crazy, but, you know, he felt the loss. And that's the way it is. Well, you know, that is fantastic. When are you going to write your own book? Oh, it's in the works. So yeah, I, knew, I think, knew it was coming. Yes, it is coming. So I think 2014. Beautiful. Yes. You're going to premiere it on our show? Of course I will. Oh, okay. Well, there you go. See, I know this woman is so intelligent. She scares me. Anyway, <laughs> let's hear it for Lorna, please. Give a round of applause. <laughs> and you'll be able to get a hold of her over at the OMP Center on Thursday nights, right? Yes, Thursday, Thursday night. nights. Okay. So I want to thank you for coming on the show. I know you got you. spoiled. You had the whole show to yourself on Maggie's World. I know. But unfortunately, you got, we got so many talented people, and Ray Ponson's going to beat me up. I saw him. He's always throwing me the evil eye. He says, if I don't get him up there. So we're going to go with a real quick B-roll. Uh, we had a job fair this past uh, Friday over at uh, the community center, and our good buddy and all-around guru, Jay Gomez, Councilman Jay Gomez, was there presiding over it, and it was packed. Channel 7 showed up. You had, I mean, there was a line around the block. There were so many people looking for jobs, and uh, I'm hoping that a lot of them got hired because these were uh, employers that actually came with jobs in their hands. They weren't training schools. They weren't insurance companies. These were actual jobs. So, you know, we're going to let Jay Gomez mention it himself right now here on Al Mike Tonight. And we'll be back with Ray Ponson. Let's go without a control room. And Jay Gomez. You know Jay Gomez. How you doing, Jay? Hey, good morning, Art. Hey, we're here here in the Grace Black Auditorium with our free job fair today, Friday, the 21st. And it seems like it's great. A lot of people waiting to see what kind of jobs there is available. We have over 54 employers with jobs in their hand ready to take some applications. It's going to be great. Well, I tell you, Jay, you always have a good turnout, and it looks like it's going to be another record year for that. Well, you know, it's another effort by the city of Albany putting our community back to work. And jobs are needed so badly, so we're doing everything we can in the city to make it happen, to make it so, and have our community and surrounding communities, those that need jobs, they're welcome. And we're going to put it back to work, Art. Well, thanks for the interview, Jay. We're going to get some more shots of all the vendors that are here. Thank you, Art, for being here, and thanks to Channel 3. All right. Help management. 
get into like maybe uh, it's an administrative position or something. Yeah. Have you applied online? I haven't applied online yet. Okay. Yeah. So um, the two forms that you took online, it explains that you want to apply online. Okay. And then this one, it just gives you a list of all the HR locations throughout Southern California. Okay. Um, even though we're local.
Valley Vista. Valley Vista, thank you for sponsoring. And the Almaty POA Police Officer Association, thank you for sponsoring. Thank you very much. Councilwoman Victoria Martinez, how you doing, Vicky? Good morning, Channel 3. So how's it going here? Looking pretty good, huh? You know what? We got here at 9.30 this morning, and there's already a line outside. You know what that tells us? That there's still a need in this community for jobs. Mm -hmm. So, you know, thanks to the committee for putting on this event today. There are so many people out there who have been struggling, and hopefully, God willing, we'll find jobs today. Well, we know you're always in the thick of things here in the city of El Monte, Vicky. We want to thank you for your service to the community. You got it. You know what? I'll still be here. Can't get rid of me that easy. I'm right here serving the community, and I love what I get to do. Well, thank you so much. I want to know, you know what? Oh, I was going to say, they're happy. Oh, I know. I did it last year. How you doing? We got the LAPD in the house. Hi. How are you ladies doing this morning? We are wonderful. We're just sitting here patiently waiting for the uh, job fair to get started. Yeah, any moment now, they're going to be letting the people in. So hopefully you'll get some good recruits. I'm sure we will. I'm well, sure thank you for coming on down here. Thank you. You have CDs? You still use them? Yeah, all the time. I'm on my motorcycle. <laughs> on a motorcycle, so 
Why would you have CDs on the motorcycle when you can have like a... Uh, I have that too, but I have CDs too. I have a MP3, I have a... Homeland Security. Right. And this is? This is National Corps, Jamil with National Corps. Okay, which does what? We are a property management company. We actually provide affordable housing in our community. And we're a property management company with about 100 properties and tons of openings. Great. We'll let the community know. Okay, everybody, Ken Roush, once again on Channel 3. Tell us, Ken, what's going on? Well, uh, Jay Gomez, uh, Councilman Jay Gomez and Councilwoman uh, Norma Macias arranged this job fair today. Uh, we're expecting about 3,000 people uh, out seeking jobs. We have about 40 uh, prospective employers at least here to interview, so there's really no excuse not to get out here and, and, and utilize this great event. Well, sounds good, Ken. You're always in the thick of things. Well, we try to be. We try to be. Thanks Supporting a lot. Supporting the community. Yeah, that's what they all say. No, actually, I run the TV channel here for uh, El Mine. Oh, that's cool. You should come on by. What uh -huh. are you doing right now? Oh, um, I'm just trying to get a job. Well, <laughs> that's what I'm in between, because one of our um, interns got hired after, not with us, but with us. I'm trying to, I'm studying for uh, aerospace. Hmm? So, but um, I was going to school, but then I had to go stop going, so. Yeah. We'll Take. talk. Hold on. Thank you. Yeah, I And of course, Channel 7's on the spot. Okay. Only in television, folks.
Yeah, why? Well, I told Sheila to go out there and try to drag the guy in here so he can get some footage, some B-roll. Because he's, he's in the front. So the cadets are passing out water. You know what?